Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and Bible journaler here on YouTube, and with it being fall and Thanksgiving coming, I wanted to do a version of this page, which I did in my interleave Bible that has blank pages, and this one I did in regular watercolors, my Daniel Smith watercolors last year, but this year I thought I would try it using some hydrous watercolors, and I'm doing this in my Bible journaling made simple workbook, which I've been working through all month, just kind of playing on different pages. And there's a big section in the back with completely empty pages. They just have lines on them. So you can go crazy practicing whatever you want back there and not have drawings getting in your way. So I've taken a bunch of these PH Martin's watercolors. They're hydrous watercolors and squeezed some out or, or dropped some out, shall I say, on just a little tile that I got at the hardware store. I keep one of these as a palette for just such occasions. And then I took a baby wipe and I'm just applying color with a baby wipe. And I'm just kind of smooshing it around. One of the things to be aware of with these particular watercolors, they're really intense in color, which is wonderful, and they don't bleed at all. So you'll get Zippo on the other side. However, they act a little bit like ink tense pencils. If you've used those, you might have noticed that once they dry, they're dry. If you don't get your edges the way that you want them, then when they dry, they're going to dry whatever way they dried when you left them there. They're, they're not liftable like with regular watercolors. So if you're used to that, this is just a different thing to get used to in working with them. I took two sheets of computer paper just cut, folded it in quarters, and then I'm just cutting out a leaf shape, just whacking one off. You could make a fern, you could make all different kinds of shapes, whatever you want to make a mask. And this is just temporary masks that I'm using. I'm sticking a piece of rolled up masking tape, or you can use rolled up washi tape underneath, just to hold it roughly in place. I'm letting some of the leaves overlap each other, so it'll be a more natural looking kind of branch. And then I took another color. This is a contrasting color. It's a kind of bluish purple. And I put some red on my palette just in case because this is a really strong blue and I wasn't sure what it was going to do. And suddenly went, oh my gosh, this one is really bright. I wonder if it's going to lessen as I tap it out there. And it kind of didn't. It was a little bit on the overly blue side. But depending on what you want to do with yours, you might decide that's exactly the effect you want. I wanted something that felt a little more purple. And so this, this was not as much of a bluish purple as I hoped. So I took some of the pink that I had used earlier, a pinkish red, and squeezed out some drops into it and mixed a better purple. And so that worked a whole lot better. I didn't mix it with anything other than just dropping it in there and I let my baby wipe do the mixing for me. And then I could take these colors and just start spreading them out around the outside edges of all these leaves. Knowing that I have the leaves underneath in those beautiful colors that are going to show as soon as I take these masks off. It's just such a beautiful technique. You could do this with flowers. You could do this with any kind of shape that you want to cut out of a piece of paper. If you have dyes that you want to cut out some out of just some light computer paper and do this with, you could create all kinds of negative shapes here and create this kind of a look. So I'm just going to continue going around the rest of the page, getting some of the color in between each one of those little, little sections in between leaves, and then taking some of the pink, and I, I just wanted to pink it up again because it was still feeling kind of brownish purplish. So while it was wet, I wanted to make sure I got the pink in there and to brighten it up with that, because as soon as it dries, it dries. But peeling these off just very gently so that I don't rip my workbook paper, just grab those little rolls of tape and look how gorgeous that is. Just absolutely beautiful. I had a bunch of color of course left so I took a little bit of extra color onto the leaves themselves and created a shape around some of the leaves. So I, I'm kind of putting a shadow underneath one side of it so I can differentiate between the leaves that overlapped each other. And just kind of tapping it on, you could use your mask again to create that, but it's pretty easy to just tap it on. Put a sheet of paper over it once it was dry and ironed it. That's my way of treating watercolor so it will flatten out a little bit better. And is that not beautiful? Not a bit on the other side, as I said. Absolutely nothing there. 
just ran the iron over it one more time just to make sure it's good and flat. And then I just decided I would add a little verse uh, written on that in gel pen. But these watercolors are super intense, lots of fun. You can buy them in sets of, I think, 12. There's three different sets, or at least there were last I looked. And they're also available in onesies. So if you want to just buy a couple of your favorite colors, there's a link in the doobly-doo if you want to go see more about those watercolors. They're really fun and interesting to use to do some different techniques and get a really different look in your Bible journaling. Thank you so much for visiting. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving with your friends and your family and your church. And I will see you again in December for my Advent series. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.